appropriate, wasn't it? God needs to heal our land. It's never needed more healing than it needs today, okay? I encourage you and remind you when you leave today that your offering will go out in a plate as you walk out the door. There'll be a plate there. Just drop it in. Some things, some things we do not do. What do you say? Hmm? You say something? No. Is that your stomach growling? <laughs> oh. um, I appreciate all of you coming. Good, this is a good crowd tonight. Uh, we do everything we can to observe safety. Okay? Uh, we're not taking an offering. We're not using hymn books. We're just doing everything we can. We're trying to keep, we block off every other pew. Try to keep, we do that. It's not because I really think you're going to get it. Because I think a lot of people are worried about it. So let's just remember, as far as we know, nobody around here has got it in this church. So we thank God for that. How many of you believe that God can protect us? How many of you think he wants to protect us? All we got to do is show some faith, because without faith, you can't please God. You can't do it. You got to trust him. Trust the Lord, and, um, and let's uh, be faithful, right? Now, uh, we're doing something different Sunday uh, we're doing something different every week now a little bit as we get back into the groove. Next Sunday, Sunday school starts. 
We've opened up three classes, but you're not going. We're starting our Sunday school at 930. Now, we're going to stay getting out from now on at 1130 every Sunday. Okay? How many like the idea of getting out at 1130? Okay, good. All right, now, but we're going to have to sacrifice and come a little early for Sunday school. Sunday school starts at 930. At 1015, Sunday school's over, and we go here in this room for prayer. We're never going to cease to have prayer. We, a lot of most people are out of there in 15 minutes anyway, so we're going to be starting our service at 1030 like normal, but we'll be praying. I'll be opening up the prayer meeting at 1015 or 1016, something like that, okay? And uh, we'll go right back into it. It's kind of a fast service, but uh, just uh, be, uh, be in your place and we'll do our thing and, and ask God to bless this country. We need God to bless this country, okay, Brother Rick? Thank you, Pastor, and I appreciate you open the door and excited about seeing how we try to get back to some kind of normalcy. Ms. Belinda, I apologize to you publicly. I, I didn't see you coming, and my mom and dad always told me to treat a lady with respect, and you certainly have conducted yourself as a lady, and I appreciate it and proud of getting to know you as a friend, and uh, it's exciting. Let me ask you to open your Bibles tonight to Luke chapter 5, in a few minutes, we'll begin reading some verses from there. Luke chapter 5. You see, at the close of uh, chapter 4, we find the Lord uh, giving evidence that he's son of God through his miracles, through his healings, and, and uh, people was coming to him for health problems, and certainly there were some that were demon-possessed that he cast out demons, and he also, in Luke chapter 4, healed Peter's mother-in-law in, in uh, Luke 4, verses 38 and 39. And Luke, in uh, chapter 5, he continues his preaching, teaching ministry throughout the synagogues of Galilee. And at the beginning of chapter 5, we find some uh, uh, men. They're fishermen that make a living from fishing. Now, you have to understand, that's, they knew the sea, they know the fish, that's how they were making their living, was from fishing and then selling those fish. And they returned from an all-night fishing trip, like was a normal, because they did their fishing in, in the Lake of Ginneres, which also is the Sea of Tiberias, and is also known as the Sea of Galilee. Uh, but they returned with nothing. So they spent the whole night, didn't catch anything. I can relate to that. I've been there and done that, but I wasn't making a living out of it. And uh, they didn't have any excess. And from this event and from the applications in, in this situation as Jesus is approaching uh, these men, we can see some truths that we're going to look at in just a moment. And I think it's so exciting to see how God in this chapter, if you'll look at it, uses individuals. He's concerned about individuals. He talks to Peter. He uh, talks to, uh, and this is not the first time Peter and Andrew knew Jesus. They, they met Jesus when they were converted at, the, at uh, John the Baptist uh, time, and they followed Jesus for a short time, and for whatever reason, unbeknownst, is they went back to fishing. And so this is not a first time that they had met or seen what Jesus, some of the things that Jesus been. And upon the request from the Lord, uh, often the simplest requests serve as an open door to some of the most wonderful blessings that you and I can ever experience, or in this case, Peter experienced. So this event in Peter's life illustrates what can happen if we say yes to what God asks us to do. So, as we look, one day a large crowd had gathered around Jesus as he was teaching and preaching, and, and, and they gathered around him, but they had difficult hearing. The acoustics were not that good for what, uh, because it's an open air. And so he chose a boat to get into and move out. And that way, my understanding of reading about the area, I've never been there, in, it helps to increase the, uh, uh, the, the hearing ability. Uh, of the ones that were on the shore. Now, let us pray, and then we'll begin reading in verse 1 of Luke chapter 5. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for an opportunity to proclaim your truth and to look into your word and find things that need to be applied to my life and hopefully to those that are listening. Lord, I challenge each one of us to give the Holy Spirit permission to speak to our hearts and, and let us listen with spirit minds and spirit, let us read with spirit-filled eyes. Lord, you're the one that directs us and guides us and you give us the Holy Spirit for uh, with truth and applications to apply to our lives. Let us step forward and do that tonight. Now, Luke chapter five, verse one. And it came to pass, I'm going to read down in verse 11. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Generous. And I told you it's uh, uh, the alternate name for the Sea of Tiberias or the Sea of Galilee. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. So he sees two ships and they're washing their net. And they had weights on their nets and they had to throw them out. And then they would drag uh, the nets in and, and catch the fish in the nets as they would bring them in. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him, or asked him, that he should thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And when he had left speaking, uh, by the way, that the position he took to sit down, that was a normal uh, position of a teacher in those days. Uh, if you look, he said he went to the synagogue of God and, and then he uh, opened the scrolls and sat down and began teaching. Now when he was left speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we've told all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down thy net. And I started to entitle this message, Nevertheless, but instead I was led to obedience always brings blessings. Now, we see that he's sitting in, in uh, 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 Peter's boat and he's teaching and preaching. And this, this uh, request that he makes of Peter in verse 3, and he entered into the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed or asked him that he would thrust out a, a little from the, uh, from the land. Now that doesn't seem like a major request. I mean, here's a fisherman makes his living in a ship and he's asked by Jesus whom he knows, whom he saw do some miracles and he, let, and he, he asked him, go out in the deep. So he's asking him to do something that Peter knew how to do and he asked him to do something that Peter uh, didn't have to have any extra special knowledge or or abilities to do what he do uh, to do what Jesus asked him to do, and so it was something he knew how to do, and it was something uh, he didn't have any have anything extra to do. And Peter's obedience. And by the way, that's a lot what God tells us sometimes. I want you to keep in mind: God asks us to do some things, but we don't necessarily have to have everything to get it done because we have already may have it or we already may know how to do it. And Peter's obedience in this case paved the way for amazing blessings that Peter never expected. The lessons we learn from this event is how important it is to obey God even in the smallest areas. And <clears throat> throughout God's word, we find that God uses people. Now listen to me. Here's something that I, I've been learning and I've noticed and it just dawned on me and that is this fact. God always uses people. Now, God can do anything. At, at, at uh, the grave of uh, <clears throat> Lazarus, God said, roll the stone aside. He could have done that. Jesus knew how to roll the stone aside. Jesus is God. He could have done it, but he used people. And, and Brother Jimmy, help me out, but as you're reading through, from after creation, God always used people to accomplish what he wanted. So God wants to use you and I during this time of trials and crises that we're going through to help bless one another. God wants to use us to spread the gospel of God. But throughout the Bible, I don't think there's one place that God accomplished something uh, that he didn't use people besides the miracles of Jesus. Uh, those type of things that Jesus did. But 
God uses us. What amazing. The God that hung the moon, the stars and everything says, I'm going to use you to accomplish this thing. The problem is we say, oh, it's insignificant. It's just a small thing that, that God wants to use. But in verse uh, chapter five, or excuse me, chapter five, verse five of Luke, he, Jesus, Peter replies to Jesus, nevertheless, at thy word, nevertheless, because you asked me, I'm going to trust you to carry out this promise. I'm going to trust you to that I can accomplish what you're asking me to do. I'm going to trust you. Nevertheless is an adverb, and, and, and it basically means even so, I'm going to trust you at your word. And so Peter does that. And, and because of Peter's obedience, look at verse 7 real quick, if you will. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other. Uh, let's start in verse 6. And when they had done this, what? They had cast out, like he said, never listen to thy word. When they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break, or it was beginning to break. And, and they hadn't caught anything all night. And they were <clears throat> probably disappointed and, and because they weren't going to make any money that day. They, and so they were cleaning their nets and, and then they went out and said, okay, nevertheless, at thy word, even so, I'll go out and do it. And then they caught so much fish, verse 7, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. Now, isn't it interesting? All night, no fish. Probably they thought it was the biggest waste of time in their life because we're not catching anything to sell. Now they got, had two empty boats. Now they got two boats full of fish. Just because of the simple reply, Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. Otherwise, I'm going to obey. And obedience brings blessings. Do you see how they were blessed there? Now, there's three truths that I want us to draw out <clears throat> in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes that shows that blessings are important in a, in, to obedience in a Christian life. Truths, why blessings bring obedience. That's what I want you to understand. There's three truths in this story uh, throughout the Bible. Truth number one, obeying God in the smallest area is an essential step to God's greatest blessings. Obeying God in the smallest area is an essential step to God's greatest blessing. What if Peter, when asked to cast out what if Peter had said, oh, sorry, I'm busy cleaning the nets right now, Jesus. Or why don't you ask to use that boat over there instead of mine? And I've already been fishing and I'm tired and I, it would be a waste of time to fish in the daytime because they fished at night. That's when they caught the most fish out there in, in Generous. And the point is, if Peter had said anything but yes, He'd have missed out on probably one of the biggest blessings, certainly the biggest blessings of fish he'd ever uh, had time he ever had. But God's blessings come because of our willingness to do what seems to do the small things that seem to be insignificant when Jesus asks us to do this. Now, let me ask yourself, has the Holy Spirit of God, and you know that's God and Jesus. And have they asked, has he asked you to do something that seems unimportant and we didn't attempt to do it because what came across our minds is, I know what the Bible says, but, and we rationalize, hey, somebody else could do it uh, and maybe do it better than what we are. Or maybe we thought we wouldn't get the praise and recognition that we do. I mean, after all, it's just a small thing. and It's not that important. Let's me do it. What's not important when you're dealing with God's people? What's not important when you and I are trying to minister to God's people? And, and, and certainly there's some people uh, that, that it's hard to minister to, and, and, but there's still God asks you to be a witness for him and me. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to me. I always, before I preach it, usually God gets me first. I heard a preacher say one time that a preacher will never preach a message that he has not gone through, will go through, or, or, uh, 
Or, or let's see. Let me think. There's three here. What, baby? He's going through now, right. Uh, I, I, and that's true, Jimmy. You're either, going, it's you're either going through it now, you either had gone through it, or you will go through it. That's why I'm selective about what I preach. I don't want to go through something that's going, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, but obeying God is one of the smallest things. So I'm preaching to myself and have already. Listen, it's important that we do what Jesus asks us to do. Truth number two, obedience always brings blessings to others. Now, Peter saying yes to what Jesus asked him to do resulted in, in more than just him receiving a blessing. It, it, those, those that work with him, Peter, or Peter certainly and James and John and Andrew, his brother Andrew, they work with him. And, and they <clears throat> received the blessings and those that, that they had hired to help bring in the fish, uh, the fishing business that they owned. And so it was a blessing. The crowd could see and hear Jesus because he cast out a little from the land. What a blessing that was. They could understand and hear. And let me tell you, uh, I don't know how many people have hearing problems, but man, it's difficult. It's one, it's one of the most difficult things I go through and not only do I wear my hearing aid, but I take my hearing aid. I look at it and she tells me. <laughs> I look over her and she tells me. She knows I didn't hear or understand. And so it's important to know that. But uh, uh, I think I've told you before, I only got about 40% of my hearing left. And it, it, some of it got damaged in Vietnam. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just my life. I have to live with it. But, you know. And it's all one of the many wonderful things that got that uh, the trials that come into my life. But it's OK. You know what? Because one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to see Jesus and hear him. But not only this, I can hear his still small voice. The Holy Spirit can stick, speak to me and the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. We just get so wrapped up and become so busy not, that we're not as obedient in the, in the small things as we should be. And sometimes we miss hearing the voice of God, that still, small voice. Uh, my wife used to say a lot of times, God, we just want to know what you want us to do. And if you'd write it on the wall, I'll repaint it, you know. So, <laughs> but he hadn't done that yet for us. So. But Peter's friends had a very profitable day, the best day of fishing they ever had. And most importantly, they wish, excuse me, most importantly, they witnessed God doing something with the ordinary. See, sometimes we think God's got to do everything miraculously and use supernatural. And he does, but he doesn't have to use everything. He can use the ordinary. I know because he uses me and I'm just an ordinary person. It's just like singing. He was saying, sing. If you ever heard me sing, you would pray for those that had to listen to it. Uh, Miss Belinda, my mom used to tell me, son, when I was little and singing, because my grandfather sang on and played on the radio in the uh, uh, Depression time and very talented and had a nice band when he went to California and all of those. But anyway, <clears throat> So music kind of grew up in my family, and I loved it. And my mom used to make this statement. She'd say, Ricky Lyle, uh, can, can, I, can you sing tenor 12? Can you sing tenor? I said, I don't know, Mom. My voice is kind of low. Uh, why? She said, well, I want you to sing 10 or 12 miles away. <laughs> you know. And then she blessed me. She'd say, man. Boy, Ricky, after I'd sing, she said, I wish you was on the radio. I said, thanks, Mom. Then I could turn you off, she said. So you don't want me to sing with you, and this crowd doesn't want to hear me either. <clears throat> God often rewards us, especially those that are closest to us. He doesn't just reward us, but those that are closest to us. Listen. For example, no father can obey God without a blessing coming to his wife and children. Likewise, a child's obedience brings blessings to their parents. The truth number one, obeying God in the small areas is an essential step to God's greatest blessings. True two, obedience always brings blessings to others. And truth number three, when we obey God, we will never be disappointed or be a failure for him. When we obey God, 
You never be disappointed or fair. How many people ever obeyed what God asked you to do, whether it's hand out a track, whether it's uh, help somebody uh, unload groceries or pick up groceries or, or, or whatever it was? How many have done that and said, I wish I hadn't have done that? You know, no, I have not. Every time I got, there's some things I did that God didn't tell me to do or I said that God didn't tell me that I said, ooh, I wish I hadn't said that. But not what God had wanted me to do. So if I, I wonder, and this is a thought coming in my mind, I always think these things as I'm reading about these uh, references. I wonder if Peter uh, thought that he didn't need fishing instructions from a carpenter. When Jesus said, look, go out into the deep and, you know, here was a carpenter telling me, a professional fisherman, how to fish. But he knew Jesus. He had walked with him, followed him for a little while. And so he knew what Jesus could do and what accomplished. How often do we think we know more than God? So we reply, I know what the Bible says, but this is what the Bible says, but our uh, we, we don't seek advice or direction from God's word or even from our pastor. We just, our spiritual leader or teacher, we just, just figure it out on our own. Say, hey, I know more. I know what the Bible says, but, you know, this is 2020. It don't apply that way, so let's don't do that. Like I had a, a youth pastor ask me one time. He said, listen, do you think the youth ought to obey their parents if their parents don't treat them correctly, if they maybe abuse them physically, mentally, whatever. Do you think they should agree? I said, well, the Bible says children are to honor their parents, obey their parents. He said, he said yeah, but I, can. I said, hold it. Let me tell you this. What it's saying is you honor their position, not their actions. For example, being in the military, I don't know how many in here has in the military, there's some officers I served under I did not care or like or uh, wanted to be around. I thought somebody needed to teach him some things. Some of them were 90 day wonders, which means they became an officer in 90 days. But when I came across them, I still saluted them because I respected their position and their uniform. And so I still, I didn't have to agree with the way they did things or treated people. And it's the same thing with these young people. Because, and, and it says, you, young people, you live a longer life. So, hey, if you want to live a long time, Gavin, Trevor, and uh, Elena, just show respect to your mama and your daddy. And man, you could be older than a preacher. That's something. If Jesus doesn't come back first. All right. Like Peter, we must realize that obeying God is always the best course of action for us to take. Obedience is all. What caused the initial sin in the Garden of Eden? Was it eating of the fruit? No. It was disobeying what God has said to do. And partial Obedience is disobedience. Just partial obedience is disobedience. Jesus can take all our emptiness and loneliness and our relationships, our finances, our careers, our dreams, our goals, and change them into something wonderful, greater than we could ever imagine if we just obey him and follow his directions and his guidance. Sometimes we hesitate to obey because we're afraid of the consequences that God uh, created this world, causes our heart to beat, can bring us from failure to success, but we're afraid of whatever the consequences are. So I, I, I don't know enough to accomplish that, or I'm afraid I'll be misunderstood or made fun of if I do that. Or maybe I, I, I won't get, uh, and there's some Christians I don't see any tonight that say, you know, I don't, won't get the recognition and the praise I think I should get. But <clears throat> we will. And when we're obedient to him, 
We will never be disappointed because obedience always brings God's blessings. And the choice to obey is always up to us as individuals. So in Isaiah 55 verse 8, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. If we adapt the attitude of nevertheless at thy word, which is the first step, action step, to obedience. I'm not saying that obedience will always bring out the outcome we expect or the outcome we want. There are times that trials precede the blessings. And there are times our desires don't line up with God's purpose. And that is when we need to remember Isaiah 55, 8. Again, let me read it. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. So let me encourage you to be obedient in the small things. And he, when he trusts us with small things, will give us some bigger things to do. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to proclaim this truth and showing us in your outline how God has loved us and God uh, has a special time for us. He has special things that each one of us can do. Some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. Lord, I thank you for the vision you gave our pastor for this uh, land here on this corner of K32 and as I grew up, it was County Road 2, and Lord, as we can see what God is blessing, and Lord, I thank you, even during this difficult time, for the spiritual wisdom and strength of our pastor and his wife, Miss Debbie, and Lord, and how special they are, not only as friends, but as leaders in our church. I thank you, Lord, for our deacons. Now, Lord, whatever and however small your tasks are, won't you call us to it? In Jesus' name, amen.